Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, members of court, colleagues, honoured guests. Thank you very much for coming to this session. This, uh, this um, session on empowering higher education for a sustainable future as part of our Founders' Day celebrations. My name, if you don't know me, is Jonathan Knight. I'm the Pro Vice Chancellor for Research here at the University of Bath. We've got about an hour for this session, and our, we've got, as you'll see, a number of speakers lined up for you, quite literally, here in the front. What we're going to do is, um, I'm going to chair the session, but instead of chairing it formally throughout, we're going to have a sort of verbal conga line, where I'm going to introduce the first speaker, and the first speaker will introduce the second speaker, and hopefully we'll reach the end of the speakers uh, in good time, well within the hour, with a bit of time for questions at the end of all the talks. So if questions occur to you, please keep them in your mind until the end. So in order to get that started, then I simply should need to introduce the first speaker. The first speaker is Professor Rajani Naidu, who's a professor of higher education and director of the International Center for Higher Education Management within the School of Management here at the University of Bath. Before this, she was an inaugural member of an institution that acted as a model for the development of a critical and democratic higher education system in apartheid South Africa. <coughs> Her research analyzes the links between shifts in global po political economy, government restructuring of higher education, and organizational change in universities. She has published extensively on how government regulation and market forces impact on academics and students, on teaching and research, and on contemporary understanding of how universities contribute to the national and global public good. Without further ado then, Professor Naidu, thank you very much. Um, thank you, Jonathan, for those um, very kind words, and thank you all very much for uh, being here. It's especially nice to see some faces that I haven't seen for a very long time. Um, so, as uh, Jonathan said, I am a professor of higher education in the School of Management, and um, the International Center for Higher Education Management uh, is located in the School of Management, and this gives us a very, very um, diverse and rich um, interdisciplinary context from which to work on. Our members come from uh, the School of Management, but we also have members from the Department of Education, from Social Policy, from Mathematics, and from Biology. We have a prestigious group of visiting uh, professors. We have Max Alveson, who is from the University of Lund in Sweden, uh, Roger King, who is the co-chair of the Parliamentary Commission on Risk and Regulation in Higher Education, uh, Ian Jameson, who, is, who was the Pro Vice Chancellor here at the University of Bath, John Davis, who was one of the founders of the uh, DBA, and Philippa Levy, who was the uh, Pro Vice Chancellor of the University of, of Adelaide. ICHEM was founded in uh, 2002 by the UNESCO Chair of Higher Education, Professor Richard Mordet. And we are very pleased that Professor Mordet is here with us today. We would like to present two aspects of our work. First, I want to present our leadership program, the Doctor of Business Administration in, in Higher Education uh, Management. Jürgen Enders will then present some of our research themes, and Janis Gabriel will go into a specific research theme that we have in, in, in ICAM. We will end our presentation with uh, our PhD student, uh, Mukube Masuta, who will be talking about his own PhD uh, research. So, to begin with, the DBA. The DBA in higher education management is the only program of its 
kind worldwide. We believe that the diverse and the pressing and the contradictory challenges facing higher education require a different type of leadership. It requires a leadership that combines intellectual capacity with strong um, strategic capacity. The DBA is distinctive in a number of ways. First, it is based in a leading school of management. Second, it combines scholarly research with advanced leadership practice. Our vice chancellor, our pro-vice chancellors, our dean, and the vice president for implementation all teach on our program. The curriculum is truly comparative. We go beyond a focus on the USA, UK, Western Europe, and nowadays China is very popular. What we try to do is we look at the interesting innovations that are happening below the radar, that are happening in countries that are less visible. For example, we are very interested in what is happening in Chile. Chile is developing a social justice policy in higher education that is truly astonishing and that we would like to look at the, the sorts of impact that it will have both on the higher education system in Chile and on widening participation and access. Finland is developing even more important innovative strategies that link higher education to core modes of innovation. In South Africa, the government is re-looking at the university uh, medical school curriculum. And that's very interesting because they are trying to fuse Western medicine with some tenets of traditional medicine. South Africa is also developing an environment that is very inspirational for junior doctors and that is also sustainable. And we think that we can learn in a very inspirational way from those sorts of examples. Our program has global reach. As we can see on the DBA world map, our students and our alumni come from around 30 different countries. Students enrolled on our program remain connected to each other, they remain connected to us, and they remain connected to ICHEM throughout their professional lives. <coughs> Taken together, our students represent one of the largest international group of research active leaders investigating the sector. They produce influential research and they produce important management innovations. I would like to turn now to some important examples of graduates and alumni. Dr. Jose Restrepo is the rector of the Universidad del Rosario in Colombia. He is a very good example of a leader who combines important leadership as well as continues with scholarly activity. He has more than 20 books and other scholarly publications. His doctoral thesis drew on historical institutionalism to understand how global forces were impacting on higher education in Colombia. More practically, he has developed a credit framework for the whole country. At present, the Colombian government is negotiating with the most powerful insurgent guerrilla movement in the country, the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia. Jose, together with other university leaders, is helping to support this peace process. Another example is Dr. Luce Longsworth, who is principal and pro-vice-chancellor of the Open Campus of the West Indies. She is leading a multi-campus regional strategy on open learning. 
At the same time, she has continued with her research on the interaction between leadership and new technology. Closer to home, we have Ross Hudson, who is the manager of the Learning Gain Programme in the Higher Education Funding Council for England. This work will feed directly into the UK government's teaching excellence framework. And then for someone who was closer to home but is moving very far away, and that is Professor Nigel Healy. Nigel was expected to be here today, but he has taken up the post of Vice-Chancellor of the National University of Fiji. He is finding the transition from Nottingham to Fiji more difficult than he thought. <laughs> Nigel has held a number of leadership posts in the higher education sector. He has also been economic policy advisor to a number of, of governments. His research brought together business studies, economics, and sociology. It focused on the structural, the economic, and the cultural problems faced by managers who are opening up branch campuses in other countries. His research was very widely cited in the media, and many universities are using his findings in their own international strategy. We were also invited by the South African government to adapt the DBA to develop a future leaders program. South Africa and its higher education is undergoing very many important transitions. Our program will equip participants with advanced research skills, it will help them devise innovations, and it will create a young cadre of university leaders who will be globally connected and embedded. In his welcome address, the Vice-Chancellor of the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University, Professor <coughs> Derek Schwartz, remarked that apartheid and the academic boycott had placed South Africa in a type of ice age, and that he welcomed the University of Bath and other international currents, as these would unfreeze the historical legacies of the country. Our curriculum included many international insights that was very challenging and very informative to the South Africans. But we also focused on what was relevant and what was indigenous and what was valuable in South African higher education. When we arrived back in the UK, we found that much of our own thinking was also unfrozen. <laughs> 